wait to worshipers. I know you've heard me talk about how I got into podcasting and how I use Anchor. But if you haven't heard it, I just can't stop bragging. So let me explain for you a little bit about the easiest way to make a podcast. If you have not heard, it's through Anchor. Anchor, man, it's free. Did y'all hear that? It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone. Um, Sometimes I use my computer, but for the most part, I do it right from my phone. Also, uh, sometimes we're in the studio, so you never know. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, many, many more. So um, it's a great gig. Also, you can get paid from your podcast with no minimum listenership it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place so listen just so you can uh be a part of what's going on in the podcast industry now download the free anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started and you can also check out wait to worship right there as well we look forward to hearing you I greet you in the high and holy name of Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Ricky Nelson of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. I thank God for another opportunity to, to be in your presence and bring you the word of the living God as we continue in our series, Step Towards Spiritual Maturity. We want to move into another aspect of this lesson, this word that's designed to be a blessing and to benefit those who listen. We certainly thank God for the members of New Birth and the, those who share with us. And we pray that this series have been a blessing to you. I want to invite your attention to the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. As we continue in this series of steps to spiritual maturity, this is another element or aspect of this sermonic presentation. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, very familiar passage, and I hope you get your pen, paper, and notes out that you may share with us. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I want to use as a thought and subject matter as we share in this season of sermons, uh, maturing in the word, maturing in the word. My brothers and sisters, as we continue to take steps towards spiritual maturity, I discovered that one of the obvious ways that one obvious way uh, for one to develop and grow in their walk with the Lord is to use the spiritual tools necessary for growth, maturity, and development. One of the tools given to the believer is the word of God. The Bible says some powerful things about the word of God. Psalm 119, 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart. I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Romans 10, 17 says, So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God's word was given so that the believer can mature and grow. To develop into a mature Christian, the believer must go through a process that moves he or she from milk to meat. Therefore, in order to move in the direction of being able to digest meat, Paul says to Timothy, in 2 Timothy 2.15, he says for him to study, to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Paul wrote this letter to Timothy because he wanted him to come see him. He did not, but he did not know whether he would get there in time to see him. So he sends this letter in advance to encourage his son in the faith. He wanted to encourage him because he wanted to make sure that he was equipped for his call. Next, he needed to strengthen his courage because Timothy had 
the tendency to become discouraged. So he needed to take care of himself so that he could adequately minister. When we come to this text, for a long time, it appeared to me that verse 15 was stuck in the middle of verses where it had nothing in common with. But when we look around at the context of the text, there is valid evidence that there is a connection in verse 15. This is what is going on around the periphery of the text. On the left side of verse 15, verse 14 reveals Paul telling Timothy to deal with the members of the church at Ephesus who were arguing over non-essential matters. On the right side of verse 15, Paul tells him to teach the people to stay away from empty conversations and meaningless talk or stay away from non-productive conversations that do not amount to it. In other words, if it's not going to benefit you, if it's not going to uh, amount to it, if it's not going to bless you, if it's not going to enhance you, if it's not going to be a benefit or a factor to you, Paul says, you and I need to stay away from things that will, will not do anything to encourage us, enhance us, empower, for, empower us, or enable us. So he says, stay away from non-productive conversations that do not amount to any. In fact, he may as well go ahead and say, stay away from non-productive people that will not benefit you or bless you in no way, shape, or form. He says, to, fur- to go further on the right side of verse 15, he says, stay away from false teachers and false doctrine. Therefore, for us to deal with pre-verse 15 and post-verse 15, we must mature in the Word of God. In In order for us to deal with what is given in the verses that precede verse 15 and the verses that come after verse 15, he says one must mature in the Word of God. And the question you have to consider for yourself is, uh, am I maturing in the Word? What am I doing to grow in the Word? How often do I read the Bible? Or am I diligent in reading the Bible? Am I consistent with reading the Bible? Even outside of my own personal devotion, the question you have to consider for yourself is, do I attend those things that will enable me, such as Bible study, Sunday school, am I doing those, am I participating in those elements that should that will enable me, encourage me, and help me grow in and mature in the Word of God? Therefore, to deal with pre-verse 15 and post-verse 15, we must mature in the Word. So when we mature in the Word, this is what we have. Number one, we will develop in the Word. The first what you write is that we will develop in the world. That's the first principle that we want to give you. We will develop in the world. Paul opens this verse by saying, study. This is another way of saying being diligent. In other words, in order to develop in the world, you must have a clear focus on the word. Say it again. If in order for you to develop in the world, you must have a clear focus focus on the word. Not only is he encouraging Timothy to develop in the word, but he needed to encourage the church at Ephesus to do what is necessary to develop in the word. This wasn't just given to the pastor or to Timothy, but he said to the church, you are responsible, you are accountable to do what is needful and necessary to develop in the word. Because if we look at the left side of the verse, verse 15, Diligently knowing the word will keep you from disputing over non-essential matters. If you, listen, if you are engaged, grounded, rooted, and guarded by the word, you will be careful of disputing over non-essential matters. Apparently, they would have disputes over petty matters, such as rumors, gossip, criticism, trivial day-to-day matters and theological positions. In other words, things that did not amount to anything, they found themselves uh, debating over it, uh, and it allowed them to move out of being a non, being a productive ministry, a productive church to become non-productive because they allow non-productive matters 
to interfere with their existence. Thus, Paul is saying that if we spend time getting to know more of the word of God, we won't have time for non-productive, meaningless, empty, vain conversation. So for the church to be diligent in its study of God's word, then Timothy must be diligent in the study of God's word. In other words, your people of God will only gravitate or do what they see the man of God, or the, the person who are who's responsible for teaching the word of God, that people only will be diligent as long as they see a diligent leader doing what they are supposed to with regards to the word. The church will follow the example of the leader of the church because the church feeds off what they see in the pastor. Again, we can get caught up with theological disputes that have nothing to do with biblical studies. Therefore, it will lead to debate, disputes, and a differing of opinions. In addition, allow me to say that non-productive conversations and theological disputes give birth, watch this, to division in the church. Again, non-productive conversations, theological disputes will give birth to divisions in the church. However, when we develop, when we mature, when we grow, when we enhance in the word of God, not only will we be on one accord biblically, it will cut down on the division within the church and it will help us mature in the word of God. And I wonder if I'm talking to anybody here who understands that maturity comes with development. That is, the more time you spend with God, the more time you spend in the world, you will find yourself developing and maturing as a result of your, your, the time you are spending in the Word of God. You, you see, you know when you are developing the Word because the Word will get in you. The Word will become a part of you. In addition, another sign of your development is the affirmation of the Father. You are seeking approval from everyone else. But when God affirms you, everything will be all right. I don't need everyone else's affirmation. I don't need everyone else's approval. But if God is approving me, if God is affirming me, if God is letting me know that he is with me, he is on my side, then I know that everything will be all right. Not only does the text reveal that we must develop in the word, Secondly, the text is tailored to teach us if we're going to mature in the word, then the second principle is we must be able to discern the word, discern, discern, discern the word. Look what the text study should I say prove I'm God. Discernment refers to what you are able to perceive or recognize. One of the things that I discovered as a believer, the Lord gives us all discernment. You know when something is right or wrong. We know when something is genuine or ingenuine. When we consider the word of God, we know the word when we hear it. When we hear the word of God, we know when we consider the word of God, when you've been in the word, when you've studied, when you applied, when it has become a part of you, we know the word when we hear it. In fact, when you are a student of the word, you can Discern, discern what has been affirmed by God. Let me say that you can discern what has been affirmed by God. The old saints will say what comes from the heart will reach the heart. When we study to show ourselves approved unto God, there will be no times for debate. There will be no time for disagreements, no time for opposing opinions because the word can speak for itself and the Holy Spirit will help you to be clear in what it says. Help me, help me somebody. I said, when we study to show ourselves approved unto God, there will be no time for debate, no time for disagreement or opposing opinions because the word can speak for itself and the Holy Spirit will help you to be clear in what it says. Furthermore, the more you study the word and develop, you, your discernment will mature as well because this means you are getting closer to the Lord. This means as you move from milk to meat, if you remain on milk, there will be no signs of maturity, which means there will be, no, there will be a delay in your discernment development. But when you begin to mature, you begin to discern some things, especially spiritual things. That means, that means you're gravitating, you're uh, 
developing a insatiable appetite for me. You'll be able to discern some things in people. One of the things that I love about the Lord is that he will, he won't allow anything to slip up on you because he has given you a level of discernment that, that keeps you, that protects you, keep you on guard, won't allow you to get caught off guard. Then Paul says something about rightly dividing the word of truth, which really means to cut it straight. Uh, when you get the word in you, when you get the word and you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you will cut it straight. When you, when you have been in the word and when the word has gotten in you, you will know when the word is being custard or when the word, when the truth is being told. This, this is what making sure, this is what making saying amen to the word worthwhile. When you know the word, discern the word, you can give affirmation to what you heard. My God, you do not mind testifying, saying amen when, I, when you hear it. I know it is the word. I have to affirm what I heard. When you hear the word and when you know it is the word, you don't mind testifying to it. You don't mind affirming it because the Holy Spirit has given you affirmation. You're able to discern it based on what you have heard when it's proclaimed. Thank God for the power of the word. When we, you are maturing in the word, when you are developing the word, when you are growing in the word, you will know when the word is being preached taught or it's being presented, thank God for the word, knowing what you need to develop in the word. Not only should one, it, as you mature in the word, given a level of discernment of the word. Here's the last thing. When you mature in the word, you'll be able to unequivocally defend the word. Ah, uh, you'll be able to defend the word. Theologically speaking, this is referring to apologetics. Apologetics means to defend. When you spend time in the word, you'll be able to, de to defend your conviction. Let me be clear. You really don't have to defend the word because the word can defend itself. I say you don't have to defend the word because the word can, it has the power to defend itself. But however, when the word is in you, you can defend unapologetically your convictions of the word. Defend literally means to guard. It means to justify when. Defend means to guard or justify why you believe what you believe. Therefore, it makes sense for the church to be on one accord in doctrine because when you know what you know, then you can defend what you know and believe. One of the primary reasons Paul says what he says in verse 15 is due to what is going on in the church, a lot is going on within the church. Not only was he trying to rid the, uh, the church of meaningless conversations, but he was he had to be prepared to defend the word against false doctrine. This this is what is happening in the church at Ephesus. Hymenaeus and Philetus were teaching that the resurrection had already taken place. That is, they were teaching something that had not happened yet and went against the foundational teachings of the church. As a result, it caused a doctrinal divide because some of the church believed them. This is one. Listen to what I'm saying. This is why you have to be careful. We have to be a, a careful of, of allowing any and every type of person coming to our houses of worship to preach or teach. When you have your people, when, when God bless you to place your members uh, on a steady diet, you don't want to bring anything in that is contrary to the diet that you have placed them on, helped them to get on because it will cause them to become uh, spiritually sick and ultimately they will need to regurgitate what they ha what has been placed into their system. Uh, Paul had to counter what had been taught because some, because you're always going to have some who are weak in the faith who don't spend time with and they will believe in and everything that is presented. So some begin to believe in what was being said they were straight away from the truth. And so, so what I'm saying is when you mature in the word, when you're able to defend the word, keep in mind, the word can stand on its own. It can defend itself. But every now and then, when your theological and biblical understanding come under attack, and believe me, it's going to come under attack because you have matured in your understanding of the word, you'll be able to defend what you know because the Holy Spirit would give you what you need to stand. Ah, and I wonder if I'm just talking to somebody right now 
who have found themselves in position where you had to defend what you believe we go with regards to the world. You will always have those. The devil will always have persons in place to challenge what you believe, challenge what you have been taught, challenge what you have come to understand down through the years. The devil will always have persons in place who will challenge who you are. But can I tell you, have you matured enough? Have you developed enough in the word of God where you can defend what you believe, that you don't mind, you don't have to close the door and hide from Jehovah's Witnesses because you're able to stand on the door. You don't have, you don't have to walk away from a conversation that, that's challenging what you believe because you'll be able to stand on the word of God. You don't have to shy away from opposing the people. You just, the Holy Spirit will give you what you need to stand on the word of God. When you, when you have the Holy Spirit, you will stand. You'll be able to defend the truth, defend the doctrine, defend the faith, defend the word, defend what you believe because you have moved from milk to meat, from fear to faith, from being powerless to being empowered, from weak to strong. Is there anybody here who's thankful that you have grown, you are growing, you are gravitating? You can say like the old saying, I'm not what I ought to be, but I thank God I'm not what I used to be. I'm in process. I'm in progress. I'm progressing. I'm moving towards that 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 mature, that maturing, that developing destination. I'm I'm a long ways from where I was, but I haven't got to where my goal is. I'm still in process. I'm on my way there. So I'm gonna stay with the word, stay in the book, continue to study, continue to pray, continue to do what is needful and necessary for my spiritual growth and development. I'm gonna continue to do what is needful and necessary to help me mature, to help me grow, to help me enhance, to help me to be who God wants me to be. I want to be able to defend what I know about the Lord Jesus. Listen, I don't care what others say about him. You can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. He's, I've been with him a long time. More importantly, he's been with me a long time. And because he's been with me a long time, I cannot stray. I cannot go against. I cannot leave the, the person who has been good to me, who's been kind to me, who has been better to me than I've been to myself. Thank God for the power of the word. Thank God for maturing in the word. Thank God for development in the word. I'm telling you, if you're going to mature in the word, I'm just saying you need to, Paul says we have to develop in the word, but discern the word, and we should be able to defend the word. God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the word that has gone forth. Thank you, God, for allowing us to share. Now, we pray, God, that the seed of this word has been planted. We pray that it will take root in someone's life, that they may come to know you and give their life to you. We pray, God, that this word will lead, guide, direct, and empower. We pray, God, that we'll encourage someone who need to know you in the part of listening. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, we pray that this word has been blessed to you. If this word has been blessing, I pray that you, if you're not, if you're not saved, you don't have a church home, open up your heart and come to Jesus and make him your savior thing. If you, if you want to be a part of New Birth Family, you can do so at newmembersconnect at gmail.com. You can indicate through our email that you want to be a part of our family. If you want to be a blessing to our ministry, you can do so on Givelify. Look for New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, Little Rock, Arkansas, and download Givelify on your app. And just tap Give it. You'll see my picture. You'll see our, our profile at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, Little Rock, Arkansas, PO Box 2814, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72202. You can mail us or seed, or you can sow a seed through Givelify. We just want to be a blessing. We want to be a blessing uh, to our ministry. So that's sowing in good ground. But more importantly, guess what? If you don't know him as your savior, we want you to connect with him in a very strong way. Try him. But two in the word, see what God will do for you in the process.